This question really tests your understanding of how circuits work and how do diodes work. An ideal diode, let's see, has what? Zero resistance when forward biased and infinite resistance when reverse biased. What does that mean? We look at that later. Okay, so connected in a circuit as shown, a high resistance voltmeter on the right side is connected across diode and resistor. Which two rows give the reading of the voltmeter correctly? So forward and reverse. Let's go to step by step to look at forward biased first. So when, when we say forward bias, what we mean is that you look at this cell, right? The, it's going to try push current in this direction. Will current go through the voltmeter? Nah. It's very high resistance, so it's probably negligible or no current flowing through there. So all the current is going to go down here and back. Or at least that's what the current wants to do. So if a diode is forward biased, it's going to be very cooperative. It will work with the battery. And it's like, all right, let's let current flow through this direction. You see the arrow is pointing down, so current will flow through. So it's going to do that. So we want to know what the measurement of V is. V, by the way, is measuring the terminal potential difference of the battery, also known as V term, which is this thing here, right here across this whole battery. Yeah, let me draw a nicer arrow for you. There we go. So what that V is also terminal potential difference. So if we can find terminal potential difference, we can find that V. But the question is, how do you find V terminal? Hmm. Hang on a second. If I know how much energy I lost in the battery, lost volts, then I can use my EMF minus lost volts to find the answer. But I don't know what's my lost volts. To find lost volts, I need to know what the current in the circuit is. So I need to find current first. Okay, so let's do the first step. Find current. Well, we can use Kirchhoff's law. So we know the EMF equals to, it's only one battery, right? The current times all the resistance, so it's all the potential drops. Small r plus big r. Oh, what's small r? By the way, we call this small r. This is big r. Internal resistance, things like that. So EMF is 3 volts. I, I don't know. r is 1 ohm. Big r, 2 ohm. So that will give me a current of 1.0 amps. Mm. Okay, so I have found current. What is the lost volts now? So you got to think of how we calculate lost volts in the first place. Lost volts is our good old Ohm's law, VIR, current through the battery. Okay, the orange color one, times the internal resistance. So this is 1 times 1, no? 1 times 1, which will give you 1 volts. <laughs> so that's telling me that there will be a 1 volt lost here. Potential difference. Very nice. Now I can do the third step. So if I know how much I lost, I can calculate the terminal potential difference, which will be the EMF minus what I lost. Okay, so terminal potential difference. Uh, let me rewrite this a little bit. Sorry about that. Wait, ah. Uh. So V terminal will be EMF minus whatever you lost inside the battery. You see the dotted line is all inside the battery. So this will be 3 volts minus 1 volts equal 2. 3 minus 1 equals 2. That means across the battery cell, like say, nah, do I have a battery? Yes, I do. So let's say you take, example, take a battery, you measure across it, that's a terminal potential difference. You get 2 volts. Okay, so we can really check off some answers. 2 volts for forward bias. A and D are out. Let's look at what happens when you are reverse biased now. So this is forward. Let's look at reversed. So reverse means I'm going to change the direction of the diode. The current wants to flow this way. But the diode is going to be nasty and say, nope, I am going to stop that flow. So you see the arrow is pointed backwards. So that means you have infinite resistance. Infinite resistance means now your current cannot flow. Infinite resistance, you're not going to let anything go through that. And current cannot flow through the voltmeter. Maybe there's negligible current, but we don't know. So this is our first thing. Number one, if you want to find the current, there is no current. No current shall pass. Zero amps. 
So if you have found current, what is the amount of lost votes? Think about it. Will there be any lost votes? Lost votes we calculate by I times R, right? And if there's no current, there is no lost votes. There are no lost votes. And if there are no lost votes, what is the terminal potential difference across the battery? Battery terminals, that's why we call it terminal. Ma. So your terminal potential difference will just be EMF minus the lost votes, right? But if there's no lost votes, then this part is gone. So all you have is EMF, which is 3 volts. So that means when there's no current or when the thing is reverse bias, there's no current in the circuit, so this is reverse. When there's no current in the circuit, there's no lost volts. Because there's no lost volts, there is your terminal potential difference is your EMF. You're like, wow, miss, no current, how can the voltmeter measure anything? I'll show you an example later. Yes, you can measure. You are only measuring the potential difference between this and this part of the battery cell. So, yeah, you can still measure something. But let's look at the answer first. 3 volts, huh? 3 volts would be right here and right here. Mm, answer is C. Best choice ever. To answer the question, how can you measure a potential difference even when there's no current in the circuit? Well, I have one question for you. If you've ever done lab and circuit, and you put a battery here, let's say a 1.5 volt battery, you take a voltmeter, and you connect the terminals like that. Both leads to both ends of the terminal, the plus and the minus. What would you measure on the voltmeter? Would you measure anything? You think about it and see. Yes, the voltmeter would measure something. And that will be your 1.5 volts EMF. So this measures EMF. You say, miss, what about internal resistance? Well, EMF equals to the terminal potential difference. Because there is no circuit, there is no current, there is no lost volts. What you measure is whatever the EMF is. So yes, you still will measure something. But what if I change it a little bit and now I say, I have a battery, same battery, also 1.5 volts. Whatever's written on the battery, uh, like 9 volt battery or what, um, that is the EMF of the battery. So I take this battery, now I connect it to a resistor. I don't know what value it is, but I don't care. But the important thing is now there's current flowing in there. When there's current, there's lost volts somewhere inside here due to internal resistance. So if you take a voltmeter and you measure across the battery or across the resistor, depending on how you look at it, what would you measure? What would you see? 1.5 or something less? You think about it. In real life, there's... Uh, internal resistance. So maybe you'll measure something like 1.48 volts. Okay. So once you have current, you have lost volts inside here. I don't know. Not here, sorry. In the battery. And because of lost volts now, what you measure across the cell is not quite the EMF that was promised to you because of internal resistance. So I don't know. Maybe one day you'll make the battery... You'll be the first person in the world to make the battery with zero internal resistance. Oh man, you'll be rich. All phone companies will want to buy your technology. Because no energy loss. Okay, so just a quick mention. Uh, sometimes MCQs will ask you this. The bigger the current, the more lost votes. When there's more loss votes, you have a reduced terminal potential difference. And the inverse is true. Lah. The smaller the current, the less lost volts, bigger terminal potential difference. Okay, so that's all for this question. Hopefully that was helpful. Any doubts, just comment below. And that is all for this video. See you in the next one. Next question, next video.